Hey guys, it's Danny with Wild Weasel Designs. Today we are going to talk about using the Cosmos Ink color profile when we're printing. So I love Cosmos Ink. It's what I started with. I have it in both my 15500 and my 2720, uh, but it does take a specific way to get your colors to look right. Sometimes if you print using different profiles with Cosmos, you get a blue tint, you get a green tint, you get a purple tint. Um, so this is the easiest and best way that I have found to get true colors with Cosmos. So I have my image right here and this is what I wanna print. And all of my designs are done in sRGB mode to get, you know, a, a wider range for everyone because I don't know what all ink people print in. I don't know how they print. So I want to give everybody a good starting point to get the most accurate colors. So all of my designs are embedded with the sRGB color profile. But for Cosmos, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to convert my image to the Cosmos profile. Now what does that mean? So converting the image means all the colors in here that you see, these are all hex codes. And hex codes are the language that your design software uses to translate to the printer. So I want to make sure that I have the correct color hex codes the correct translation, if you will, for Cosmos. And to do that, I'm going to convert this image to the Cosmos profile. Now what I will do is I will go, there we go, <laughs> I'll go up to edit. I will go down to convert profile. So you see down here, we've got color settings, we've got a sign, we've got convert profile. So at, at the very beginning, I was making the wrong assumption that I was going to assign the profile. And I, I'll do this just to show you why you do not want to assign the Cosmos color profile to your designs before you print. So I'm going to click this. It's going to say it's going to change it. I'm going to say OK. This is my working, so this is what I design in. But you see that? You see that huge difference if I just assign that profile? It's because the position of the hex code in Cosmos and the position of the hex code in sRGB are completely different. So this pink color, just focus on this for right now, this pink color is the actual pink color that I want, but that hex code in Cosmos comes up to like a peach, which is also still really pretty, but not what I wanted. So that's why we're not going to assign to Cosmos. We're going to go up here to edit and we're going to convert. So yes, I'm going to make sure that my Cosmos profile is selected. These are all the settings that I use, relative color metric. I'm going to make sure my black point compensation is on and I'm going to press OK. And you notice that it didn't change. It's the same colors. So when I print this now, the colors that I see on this screen are what I'm going to get when I print instead of the other way around with the assign that I see this color and it's going to print out corals and teals. And of course, that's not what I want. So this is the easiest way to use the Cosmos profile. And it's also why a lot of people recommend that you're not using Silhouette or Design Space or anything like that. First of all, they're not design programs. You can use them. Yes, I know people who do use them and do have great results with it. And if you do, that's awesome. But you can't actually import a color profile or work with a color profile in either one of those softwares because they're cutting softwares. It is a cutting plotter tool. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. 
uh, with something like Design Space, GIMP, Affinity, you have the option, like I just showed you, to work with your selected color profile in the design platform itself so that you're not getting any surprises. Silhouette's going to be based off of your hex codes, which is another reason why I develop and design in sRGB, because I do know I do have customers that print in Silhouette, and I want to make sure that I'm giving them something their program can translate, give them the closest possible colors to what the original design was. But if you're using something like Affinity or GIMP or Photoshop, then you have that range to make sure that your color profile, your design, they're all working together. So now if I were to hit Control P and bring up my print menu, I'll show you. So right now I have it set for my 2720. These are, these are the same, uh, settings that I have for my 15500 as well. We'll go into the print settings first. I have it set as letter in landscape. I do print with the premium presentation mat. I do use standard quality. For me, in my tests, when I used high quality, it was just throwing a bunch of ink on the paper, but I didn't need it because I was just wasting ink. My prints came out looking just as vibrant, just as pretty in standard that it did in high. I just had ink left on the paper after I was done sublimating. So to me, I just go ahead and use standard. Now, all of this has to do with your paper. It's what paper that you're printing with as well, because the paper is going to make a huge difference with not only color, but with the way that your ink sits on the paper. I use the Jegs paper. It's amazing. My colors are awesome. I have very, very little ink left on my paper at the end. So I highly suggest that you go over there to the Jegs group and pick you up some of her paper because it's super cheap. It's amazing. But before that, I was using the text print XPHR which is my second favorite paper. I've never had an issue with it. My colors always came out perfect, but I use the exact same settings on the JEGS that I do with the text print as well. And I've never used ASAB. So before you ask me any questions about ASAB, I've never actually used it. So I can't tell you. I do know that it's a very popular paper. It's been around forever. It's highly, widely available, and I have seen some beautiful prints with it. So what I will tell you is with paper, don't get caught up in the hype because it's not always better. I have seen some people with really high-end paper and the colors are off, but it's so many factors. I'm not saying it's the paper. I'm saying that you have to test every single thing. You've got to test your colors, your ink, your profiles, your paper. So don't just think that I'm going to buy this paper. It's going to make everything better probably won't. You're still going to need to test. Okay, so going over to more options just to show you how I have this set up. Um, again, I have it on a custom profile. My high speed is off. My mirror image is on. We'll go into advanced and I have no color adjustment. I am not telling my printer to adjust anything. The reason for this is if you are specifically using a design software like I am with Photoshop, or if you use GIMP or Affinity Designer, if you set your profile and convert your image in the software and then you choose something else here, you're going to be sending conflicting information. Just think of it as your design software speak in English, your printer is speaking Spanish. When they come together, the translation may be lost. Okay, so no color adjustment because I'm making sure that all of my adjustments I have done through Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to click cancel off there. Now down here, obviously, I've got color handling. Photoshop manages color because we went ahead and we converted to the Cosmos profile for our image. So we're going to let Photoshop make sure it manages everything. And my printer profile is going to be the Cosmos Ink profile. 
okay? And then relative color metric, which was, we saw that already, and the black point compensation are both checked as well, normal printing. And then if I wanted to go ahead and do this, I would just hit print, send it to my printer, and she would print beautifully because I have converted this image so I know what to expect. I'm trying to think if there was any other questions that was asked about Cosmos. I do know that people have had really good luck printing other ways. Um, and you may, you may be satisfied with those results. What I did, what I highly suggest everyone does, is I took the same color chart and I printed out probably about eight different settings. Um, the Adobe RGB 2.2, the Adobe RGB 1.8, the Vivid, the J7, the Cosmos Profile by itself, the Cosmos Profile Assigned, the Cosmos Profile Converted. And I did work with an amazing gentleman uh, that I met in another group who worked very tirelessly with me to try to figure out why this particular ink with this profile was off printing a few different ways. And this is what we came up with, and it has been the most on point. My colors are beautiful. They are popping, as everyone likes to say. Everything is, is relatively the same color that I see on screen. It's relatively the same color regardless if I'm printing on my tumblers or if I'm printing on fabric. So I have been very happy with it so far printing this way. So if you have any other questions about how I have my Cosmos ink set up, uh, my printer set up, printing and how to convert, um, or just any other questions general questions for sublimation or if there's another video that you want to see me do please go ahead and drop me a message or leave me a comment and until then i will see you in another video bye guys